Hey everybody, I'm John and this is Blind Whiskey Reviews. Hey everybody and thank you so much for joining me today here on Blind Whiskey Reviews. I'm glad you could join me for another No Time Like the Present review. Before we get into it, I just want to remind you guys that you can catch me on Instagram and Twitter at blind underscore reviews. I always put this at the end of the video, but some, I'm sure a lot of you don't make it there. So, for those of you that don't make it to the end of the video, if you want to catch me on Instagram, you can catch me at blind underscore reviews. You can also catch me at Mission Bottle Kill, where I'm posting pictures of people killing all kinds of bottles of whiskey. So definitely go check that out. I'm reposting all kinds of pictures, and if you want me to repost yours, just tag me in the post, and we'll do that. So I want to make sure you guys know about that stuff, because it's really a lot of fun, especially Mission Bottle Kill. A ton of people have been interacting and sending me all kinds of pictures. So tons of fun. Check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Today, I'm bringing you another brand new release from Jim Beam. This is the Knob Creek Quarter Oak. So from what I know of this whiskey, and they're not 100% clear on exactly how this process works, but they age at least a, they age a portion of what they blend into this whiskey in quarter casts. So quarter casts, instead of the standard like 53 gallon barrels, they are somewhere more like 13 gallon barrels. And they age it in those size casks for at least a minimum of four years. And then a portion of that whiskey is blended with the standard Knob Creek to create this product. So they're not really clear on the ratios, how much of it is the quarter oak stuff, how much isn't. So I'm really curious to kind of see how different this is from the standard Knob Creek. But I'm excited to get into it. I'm always down for a new release from Jim Beam. This is a limited release. Um, it's kind of got the badging like the um, cast strength releases have had, the cast strength rye or the, um, they did another release last year, what was it, the uh, twice barreled rye. Also had these little, these little medallions kind of on the front. So it's a limited release from Jim Beam and uh, we'll see how it is, hopefully it's good. We're getting cracking into another, we just did the uh, 12 years so it's, like I said, it's fun to do these wax top bottles. I think Jim Beam, since the last bottle I have opened, has improved their wax. Because again, like I said in the last one, their wax was always this crumbly mess. Every time you cracked open a bottle of Knob Creek, there's just wax everywhere. And I have not one bit of wax on this table, so that is awesome. Let's see what we get for a pop on this thing. A little baby pop. Yet again, another synthetic cork. Hmm, interesting nose. All right, so this color looks to be about like your standard Knob Creek. We're kind of in that lighter end of amber, slightly kind of orangish hue. I mean, on the nose, it's again, very standard Knob Creek. I mean, we got some, I mean, it's very Jim Beam, very Knob Creek. It's just a little bit of light fruit. A little bit of that cherry pop, definitely that Jim Beam nutty character. That slightly doughy quality to it. And I almost was really hoping for some more like rich, like um, deeper dark characters, like um, give me some chocolate or some cocoa. Kind of like what you'd get on like a twice barreled whiskey, like a, like a Woodford Double Oak. I was kind of hoping for some of that. And at least on the nose, I'm not getting it. Yeah, just very, very standard Jim Beam Knob Creek profile right now. But let's get into the taste, and hopefully that's a little bit different. Cheers. I mean, so far at first taste... I'm not getting a ton different than what, what your standard Knob Creek would taste like. There's maybe a touch more of a charred oak character on the back end, but I mean, very faint. But there's only one taste. Let's get in another one.
Hmm. So, so far, I mean, maybe it's slightly sweeter than a knob, your standard Knob Creek would be. It has maybe a touch more vanilla. And like I said, there's a slightly charred character on the back end, but I'm talking like, we're, we're talking baby steps here, very little difference. Um, these are really like small hints I'm digging at here. So, we are definitely going to have to compare this side by side with your standard bottle of Knob Creek and kind of see how they compare to each other because right now, I mean, it's hard to, the human memory is a flawed thing, but it's hard to remember what they taste like. So, I definitely want to put them side by side and really dig into the differences, but... Just as of yet, it's not popping as very different for me. So, again, as we always do in these No Time Like the Present reviews, we are going to let the whiskey sit in this glass for 20 or 30 minutes. Just give it the opportunity to open up a touch, get some air, get a little time under its belt to just release some of those beautiful flavors that are hopefully hiding in there. And that way I can tell you guys all about them. So, we will be back in just a second with that. All right, we are back. Our whiskey's been sitting in the glass. This one's been about right about 20 minutes getting some air. Hopefully it's opening up a bit. I really want to see some of these, you know, more oaky, deep, complex characters that I really expect from a whiskey aged in a smaller cask. I really want to see that come through. So let's see what we've got. I'm smelling a hint of something. There's hope here. It's not blowing me out, but there is this sweet brown sugar, kind of oaky, maybe even like slightly chocolatey note. Please come through on the palate, please. Jim Beam, don't disappoint me on this release. There's something there, there's something extra there that wasn't there before, so I'm hopeful that we've got some extra flavors here on the palate. So let's get to it. There's an ever so slight something there that's a little bit, a little bit developed. And it gives me just the slightest bit of hope that with some more air time, maybe this will open up. But as of right now, don't get me wrong, it's good whiskey. I like Knob Creek. Um, I'm a fan, I have been a fan for a very long time. I think it's a great whiskey and a great product. Just this, at this point in time, let me get one more taste before I pass judgment. One more taste. God, yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't say it. I mean, I can't say this is much different than your standard Knob Creek. It just isn't at this point. There's something there. Like I said, there's a, there's a glimmer of hope in this bottle. I taste a hint of a difference there. And it, it enhanced ever so slightly with the extra air we gave this glass. So there is some hope that with some air time, this will really open up to be maybe something a little bit different and special. But as of right now, I mean, it may feel, I will say this, the standard Knob Creek at times can feel slightly harsh, um, especially since it's developed the, the no age statement variant of the Knob Creek release. It, it has moments where it gets a little bitey, a little harsh, None of that is here. So maybe this quarter cast bit has really kind of helped round that out a touch. There's no harsh alcohol notes. You do not taste the ethanol. It does not burn on your palate. It punches a bit above its weight in terms of flavor, which is kind of, um, I, I said the same thing about the Knob Creek 12 year. That one does it more so, but this one has, has hints of that as well to where you get a lot of flavor, don't and they don't necessarily feel on the same level as the alcohol. The alcohol feels here, the flavor feels here. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, you definitely get that out of it, and I don't think that the no-age statement Knob Creek has that 
balanced as well. So I will say it has that going for it. There's a slightly extra char character, a little bit of a leatheriness that maybe the regular Knob Creek doesn't have, but it's, it's not enough for me to say that it's worth buying this bottle at this point. So um, I really wish I could tell you this bottle is knocking my socks off, but as you know from listening to this review, it just isn't at this point. It is very good whiskey. Don't, I, I'm not saying that it isn't. It is very good. It just isn't enough different from Knob Creek to justify paying more for it. So this bottle I paid 40, I think it was $47 for, um, and I think that's about the going rate for it. Your standard Knob Creek goes for about $30. So I cannot tell you that this bottle is worth a, you know, 15 or 50 or so percent increase in price. There's just not enough different about it for me at this point to say that. Now, we are going to confirm that because we are going to do a side by side with the standard Knob Creek. And I'm going to tell you exactly what's different about these two side by side. So I'm very much looking forward to doing that. And I'm very much looking forward to letting this thing get some airtime and hopefully some more of those characters will pop and come out. But right now, I can't tell you that this whiskey is a whole lot different than your standard Knob Creek release and it's worth paying the extra money for. So that is what it is. I wish I could tell you more, but unfortunately at this point I can't. If you guys have had the chance to try this whiskey, please let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. Oh, I almost forgot again. I keep forgetting this. I want to give you guys the score. So I'm going to say this is very good, very solid whiskey. It's right in that like 84, 85 range for me. I'm going to say it's an 84. I think it's good, drinkable, solid whiskey. Um, like I said, it just doesn't justify the difference in price to pay for me right now. But we're gonna dig into that in a few months. We're definitely coming back to this bottle and we're gonna find out if it opens up and if it is something special, because hopefully that it is. I don't think that, I mean, I really would hope that they don't make a limited release of something that's just about the same as their standard Knob Creek product. That just doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't think they would do that. So I think there's going to be something here that it may just take a few weeks to coax out. So we'll get there, we'll find out, I promise. Anyways, if you've had a chance to try it, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And uh, as always, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, at blind underscore reviews. You can also catch me, catch me on Instagram at Mission Bottle Kill, and you can send me an email at blindwhiskeyreviews, that's whiskey with an E, at gmail.com. Thanks for joining me, guys, and until the next time, cheers. Cheers.